Listening is at the heart of proper communication, which itself is at the heart of every meaningful connection you can have with another human being. In other words, learning to listen matters. 64,000 is the median number of words per book. Average person reads about 200 words per minute. Simple math will tell us that is one book in 320 minutes. To accomplish this in seven days, numbers say you would have to read for 45 minutes a day. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification button, like, comment, and share. Enjoy. Welcome to the Book of the Week series. Every week as I read another amazing title, I share it with the world. My name is Igor S.F. Walker, and today we look at how to listen with intention. The foundation of true conversation, communication, and relationships by Patrick King. So how about you slow down and relax, reduce all that noise for just a bit, make that choice and decide to listen. In this video we look at a book about a skill that may be simple, but it certainly is not easy. You can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. So stick around till the end. I will share with you some tools I haven't used that will help you tremendously in this game of life. Discover a way to find out what actually motivates you, what innate human need is driving all of your decisions and your behavior. I will share some tools to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, and relationship management. <clears throat> Sadly, we live in a world where listening skills are never taught directly. And if people strive to be better communicators, they often mistakenly think they need to become more convincing debaters or better at arguing. Being a good listener is not some grand charitable gesture or a thing you do purely for the sake of other people. When we actually engage with attention and thoughtfulness with another person's world, everyone benefits and we only enrich our own perspective. It is the quintessential win-win. Even more than you might imagine. At least that's the first important mindset shift you must make to be a better listener. Now it might go against everything we have been taught or instinctively feel. Isn't our prime focus in any conversation on what we are saying and how we feel and whether other people are listening to and understanding us? Our urge to share personal information with others is one of the most fundamental and powerful parts of being human. Brain images actually showed that sharing information about ourselves triggers the same sensations in our brains that we experience when we eat food and when we have sex. Two behaviors that are biologically compelling for us to do. Thus it seems we are biologically compelled to share and even communicate our thoughts. Now call it ego or call it a bad habit, but many people do not like to think of themselves as poor conversationalists or lacking in the listening department. This may be the biggest barrier of all because it stops us from seeing all the other obstacles preventing us from being as attentive and as empathic as we could be. Perhaps the biggest problem may be people's inability to look outside of themselves and their own needs. Have you ever quietly waited for someone to stop talking 
thinking all the while about what you would say, will say, the moment they shut up. If so, you have likely been guilty of conversational narcissism too. It leads to the same outcome of dueling monologues, where the conversation hasn't really happened at all. Rather, you have two people talking at each other instead of with each other. Listening well requires that you suspend your own self-interests, your own ego, and then gracefully allow someone else to share support responses, which are what they sound like. Words or behavior that support the expression of the other person in the conversation for the active attention giving variety. A support response maintains attention on the speaker and their topic. Obviously, this can make people feel well supported. You're listening and you're sending a strong message that you actually value what they are saying and you want to hear more. The shift response, however, is an att active attention seeking response that shifts the conversation to the other person, in other words, backs to themselves. It is an act of grabbing the spotlight and pointing it in the opposite direction. A shift response is a great idea if you want to mo move the chat along to another topic or inject some fresh energy or some fresh ideas into the conversation. However, it is a bad idea if you're simply trying to derail the existing conversation in your favor. So, balance your needs and desires with other people's. Stop thinking about your response for the future and pay attention to what someone is currently saying to you. Good listeners stay in the moment. They do not get distracted with their own concerns when they're meant to be focused on someone else. Try and, try and treat conversations as pleasurable opportunities to give and take and to witness another as much as revealing oneself. We do it by being humble, by being friendly, and intrigued by how interesting other people are. The secret is to be more interested than interesting. Learn rather than teach. Listen rather than speak. It's not a great thing to admit, but many of us secretly think that other people simply aren't that interesting. And it's hard to care about what they have to say. Now have a little faith, suspend judgment, and again, just listen. Drop any preconceived ideas about what makes a person interesting. Some of the most fascinating people are actually out there just a few pointed questions away from being discovered. Having a sense of wonder about someone is one of the most powerful mindsets you can possess because it makes you want to scratch your itch. How can they teach me? What do we have in common? We have all got two ears and only one mouth. This means we should do double the listening versus speaking. But the truth is, doing so goes against our natural instinct. So acknowledge that even when people are listening, they may have different ways of listening. And clashing styles can often lead to misunderstandings or conflict. As with so much in social mastery, it comes down to awareness and the willingness to be flexible and to prioritize connecting with those around us. Different listening styles can be framed a slightly different way, according to the theories of educational psychologist Benjamin Bloom, although versions of this theory are perhaps thousands of years old. People can be understood as having a general preference for feeling, the heart, emotional, thinking, the head, cognitive, or doing, the hands, behavioral. 
in a way frame differences can explain much of interpersonal conflict and if you can become adept at noticing them you actually may give yourself a powerful tool to resolve misunderstandings frame is like a point of view but instead of conserving concerning one person it's more like a temporary platform that two or more people occupy when they do share a conversation a mismatched frame is actually a difference in conversational goals amazing listeners have taken an active hands-on approach to their engagement with others rather than just behaving unconsciously out of habit never considering the effectiveness of their tool you do not need to do anything more complicated than regularly check if you are on the same page as others and then guard against getting stuck in just one frame or one listening style there are five different levels of listening that we experience from total ignorance to almost consuming attention now these levels are ignoring pretend listening selective listening attentive listening attentive and empathic listening listening is not passive most people resist listening because they frame it as unwanted relinquishing of the stage as a boring side role in the story where they have to sit out and wait for the other person to give them an in they think of listening as dead space as doing nothing now this is a disastrous mindset because conversations only work when both people are actively and consciously involved involved active listening takes a lot of patient work and a lot of practice and can even be challenging for people who are good at it but it pays off in creating an atmosphere of true comprehension easier information flow and increased respect for all parties what we are trying to do albeit systematically with active listening is to catch our habit of being conscious of other people's emotions and suppressing our own the ultimate form of this comes in empathic reflection now most people think that receiving simply means sitting quietly but that's a huge mistake there are nine types of active listening to be used when trying to connect deeply with someone comprehension comprehending retention retaining responding restating reflecting summarizing labeling emotions probing with leading questions and silence the next level of active listening could be called empathic reflection so get into the hole with others the hole that they have dug not the one that you are digging aside them validation is somewhat a lost art validation is the act of showing respect and acknowledgement of people's intentions and emotions when we validate we express that someone else's experience their thoughts feelings are respected and indeed they themselves are valid make sense and are understandable many times when we try to validate we actually worsen the situation by using invalidating statements these are statements that dismiss or minimize people's feelings such as oh you'll be fine a helpful six step path to validation is as follows being present accurately reflecting emotions guessing emotions understanding emotions in context affirming emotions and then being honest 
it's not always necessary or even possible to practice every single one of these steps, but it's worth moving through them progressively, considering context, your position, and what the other person most needs from the conversation. <clears throat> You can be present by tuning out distractions, listening actively, and using silence. You can show genuine compassion by revealing a little bit about ourselves and being honest to encourage real feelings of trust and connection. Listening is really an exercise in reading people, isn't it? People are rich sources of information, both verbal and non-verbal. When you learn to read others, you're taking in that information and then making as accurate as of an assessment as you can. Emotional intelligence is knowing and perceiving the emotions you feel and why you feel them, and then transferring that type of awareness onto others as well. You're able to put a label on your emotional state and then find its cause and effect. Now, by extension, emotional intelligence is being able to read other people's emotions accurately and then deduce the reasons for them. The most fundamental aspect of self-management is the ability to keep our emotions in check. Better understanding people's emotions begins with understanding your own. The whole process begins with understanding yourself and then realizing everyone else has the same amount of unconscious and hidden thoughts that actually dictate their emotions and their actions. We must learn to understand subtextual cues better. This is related to the social awareness element in the emotional intelligence. We must realize that most communication is covert, and yet most of us are always responding to communication that is actually overt. Though it can be said there are countless listening styles, it is helpful to think in terms of four main styles. Number one, people, emotions. Number two, content, information. Number three, action, to-do list. And number four, time, duration and frequency orientations. Recognize which is our natural tendency and then try to skew more towards the people and emotions side. And there you have it, how to listen with intention, the foundation of true connection, communication, and relationships. Please do help out. It is easy, simply like this video, like it, like it, so more people can enjoy it. If you have enjoyed listening to this, then like it, it helps the algorithm, it helps everyone. Like it, like it, like it. Share it too and spread the word, share it. Leave a comment and share your thoughts. Start a conversation with me, start a conversation with each other. Let's see, let's talk about it. Let's practice some listening. Subscribe to my channel and stay up to date and you know how to do this. And the link to this book is in the description below. So you buy it and you read and you never stop learning, especially learning about yourself and nature. So gift yourself by taking the free human needs test on my website and find out what actually motivates you, what innate human need is driving all of your decisions and your behavior. And if you feel you are ready to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management and relationship management even further, then do check out my Master of Life Awareness program. The links are in the description below. Thank you. Love and respect.